exhale through your mouth. Again, inhale. Hold it. And exhale through your mouth. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Feel the stress. Go down your arms, out through your fingertips. Relax your chest, your torso, and your hips. Visualize the stress going down from your hips, down your legs, out through your toes. Another deep breath in. Exhale out. And you're completely relaxed. Eyes are still closed. Now you're gently breathing in and out through your nose. And as the thoughts come through your mind, allow them to just float away like clouds in the sky as you gently breathe in and out through your nose. And with your eyes still closed, I'd like to close this breathing exercise with some thoughts. The world lives and breathes, and we can draw its spirit into us. Think rolling waves, warm sun, wet grass, fresh earth busy streets, and birds singing. Get into all the sensations of life today. You don't need a lengthy meditation to connect to nature. Just draw it in. Namaste. May the divine in me honor the divine in you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like, you know, all my, the weight on my shoulder just left. <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> You're welcome. So, um, welcome everyone. And again, this is our episode 24, um, Empower Yourself Monday. Let me, um, give you a little info about who we are. I see we have a lot of people in the space. So we're the Association for Women in Communication, the South Florida chapter. And because uh, of the lockdown, I've been on, um, this is Tanya Schultz, by the way, uh, I've been on the um, Twitter quite a bit and have built some incredible relationship with some incredible women and men. And um, our, our national chapter, I'll just give a little bit our, about our history and who we are. And, uh, and our national chapter has been around since 1909. Uh, we always, I always tease and say that, you know, we're like the suffragette. We, we empower women. So when we make an, a statement, em empowerment starts with us. Um, we're one of the oldest women association and um, uh, Barbara Walter is one of us, Eleanor Roosevelt is one of us. So um, here we are now today and we're going into web three. So where we now, we are changing more about what we want to do as far as empowering different women from all over the world. And, and some of the women that I've met along the way, um, women like Bobby Baker, who's I've seen her like help women and all men and also start her, uh, start her own uh, community on Twitter. And also do live streaming and different things that she was doing. I always felt that so impressive and so um, ahead of her time. And, you know, with that in mind, that's what I think of, you know, because uh, communication is not about just like, oh, just a publicist or journalist. Yes, yes, we did start it as in a journalism school. But, you know, as, as time went on, as time went on, then you start with Web 1, then you got Web 2. So um, social media came about. And for us, um, I'm. Uh, this is Tanya Schultz. So I've been the president since 2008, on and off. So we embrace social media. And now we're getting into Web three. So with that in mind, we have um, tried to be ahead of everyone as far as um, how we look at communicators. Because so, so in 2010, we um, start talking about you know artists as communicators. It's not you know anything that you can use to communicate. That's what our our. our our goal is. And so today we're um, honoring Bobby Bicker, who is an incredible woman herself. And I'm going to have her tell us more info about her. 
Um, I actually copy all her whole bio on, on our YouTube channel. <laughs> And so it's live streaming right now. And it's a long bio, by the way, Bobby. <laughs> so everybody, welcome, Bobby Bicker. And thank you so much for being here. And I'm so happy you're here, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You look, I got a smile on my face. You can't look, but probably you feel it. <laughs> it's it's awesome. And uh, when you said, like, it's not just journalists and stuff, funny enough, my career started in journalism, uh, even though I finished art school, my first job ever uh, was as a journalist. And I was the youngest editor in chief uh, for a magazine, Family and Fashion in Albania, in Tirana. Then uh, uh, one of the biggest uh, newspapers kind of stole me away. And uh, I worked for two years for both major newspapers in Albania and uh, covered black chronic uh, that's what we call it but all the dodgy stuff that nobody kind of uh, writes about and uh, yeah culture uh, so yeah i have a little bit of ties with uh, journalism so i think this is fitting as well and uh, as you mentioned i do have the arts on twitter community i launched that as soon as uh, they did uh, uh communities i was up there asking hey can we do can we have a place for all artists of all forms i do not say just fine artists and what have you journalists poets musicians and i can see yun there that is a musician uh, incredible from piano avengers and we have incredible incredible human beings join the community it's about uplifting one another encouraging one another and uh, just being an inspiration it doesn't matter what you are in the end of the day we are all artists we just use a different way of expressing ourselves but uh, everything we do is an art form even what terry did you know i felt like my sister was doing an identification right there when terry was uh, you know uh, guiding us to to meditate and uh, calm ourselves so everything that's an art form as well on, on its own so uh, yeah, I'm an artist myself, and as you mentioned, I'm a content creator. I've been doing live streaming for eight years, uh, among other things. And uh, my aim is to inspire people and get them motivated to do some art, because art, I say, is uh, the best therapy you can do uh, to calm yourself and uh, get rid of any overwhelming emotions. And I do art therapy, so I usually play uh, nice background music and sometimes I play music from all these artists that are in the community so I highlight them as well so it's win-win situation and uh, I paint along um, and everybody needs a little bit of uh, art in their life so if they don't like to paint along I just say can't grab a cup of tea or coffee, whatever you want, and just watch the process and uh, relax. Uh, so I really enjoyed the live streaming. Uh, in UK, I have done, as you know, like yourself, because you're into fashion, makeup and all that. Uh, I was, um, you know, very involved within the fashion industry. And I'm also a makeup artist and a body painter, a champion body painter that is. Uh, at the moment, I do not do much out unless it's a job I must uh, do, but I've uh, done body painting and makeup in all fashion weeks like London, Paris, Milan, and uh, also do my own fashion line, bespoke wearable art that I hand paint uh, clothes um, for clients and designers. It depends who I'm collaborating with and uh, who is uh, commissioning me and uh, yeah pretty much that's it but I, I do mentor youngsters I do mentor women especially I am uh, very much for equality and inclusivity but also helping other women and uh, amplifying women's voices because with age as well I mean like in two I think you know eight days I'd be 46 so the years are passing by and I know that with years passing we kind of can lose a little bit of confidence so we need each other to uplift each other and encourage each other and if we have some knowledge that other women don't have around you uh, I say why don't share that knowledge freely so you can uh, 
pass it along. It's like pass the puzzle. Then you empty your brain to make more room uh, for new things to learn. So uh, I'm not saying that not helping men, of course, I help plenty of men. And <laughs> even with uh, I do courses in the uh, to. Uh, confidence in front of the screen you should know it's not just women suffering with uh, anxiety being in front of the camera is plenty plenty of men that I get uh, to teach and mentor so I don't differentiate if it's a man or a woman or a kid even teenagers I do because a lot of them want to be live streamers and so I teach that as well so I love helping people meeting new people makes me so so happy uh, to learn about different cultures and I'm a great observer a good listener too as much as I'm a good talker <laughs> I can talk a lot but uh, I love observing uh, people and uh, knowing where I am and who is you know in front of me so and I love to give everybody a chance to introduce themselves to talk about whatever they're working on so uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, probably you have something to ask, so I'm gonna. I'm on a roll there, boy. <laughs> oh no, you're good, Bobby. You're good. But I, I want to say hi to our communicator, communication director, um, Emily Taffel. She's joined the join us. Hey, Emily. Good morning, Tanya. Hi, Bobby, and good morning, Terry, and everyone else here. Uh, hi, sorry Emily. To be hi. I actually have been on the whole time. I just didn't realize I was logged into a client's Twitter, so. I <laughs> had to switch into mine. I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't let me coast. But I'm so excited to speak to you today, Bobby. And everything I've heard you say so far is just incredible and so fascinating and inspiring. Oh, thank you. Hi, Emily. Uh, Hi. And yeah, thank you for having me here. It's awesome. I have been to Florida, actually, and I have like a deep connection with America. For some reason, most of my community is Americans. They just love me. <laughs> so, yeah, I have to do my streams with American time. And I say usually on my uh, live streams, Americans going to kill me because being on spaces or live streaming is always the people I love holding space is very late which is like 1 3 a.m my time uh but i have to kind of compromise so i love you guys too <laughs> that's all i want to say and uh yeah <laughs> so when, when do you sleep bobby exactly my sister says i'm an alien uh i i must agree with her to be honest i do sleep so i do not need much sleep but uh when my body needs it I do sleep a lot and uh, I do take a lot of breaks because I'm very focused on mental health as well because unless I'm happy and I'm full of energy, I would never come online. I would never log on Twitter or anywhere. Uh, sometimes I would be having a break a month, uh, two months, a week. It depends. I need to recharge. I'm always fully recharged. And the most comment I get from everybody that ever meets me, be in that on spaces or wherever in real life, is like, do you have, what are the buttons do you use? Because uh, your energy is out of the roof. I mean, like, literally, I always have full on energy. I, I just go to the park. I work bare, bare feet, you know. I love to recharge in nature. And there is this beautiful tree that all the roots have come out and create this uh, lovely tunnel. I just sit there. I feel like that's mother tree, you know, and it's recharged my batteries. And uh, that is good for me or I doodle and listen to music or come you know uh, do other things that I love to to calm me down but uh, mental health and I guess social media could uh, impact us for good and bad so I am always mindful of uh, my myself my mental health and how I'm feeling so I can convey like my emotions when I'm high and I say to people if you are feeling low vibrations come on over I'll give you some of uh, this wicked energy I have so I'm always you know mindful of keeping my level of energy high and uh, yeah that's it and something because I, I did not mention I'm Albanian originally and I live in London when I did my intro and uh, yeah I'm Albanian and I come from a very a different background from you guys uh, maybe you are lucky a little bit but uh, 
I grew up during dictatorship. Uh, we didn't have much, but now um, that I've seen the world and uh, been around, and uh, I know better. I know how to treat people as well with kindness, no matter what background, because uh, that's how I wanted to be treated and not being seen. Different. So uh, I would urge everybody out there to not judge books by, by the cover because you never know what people are suffering or people that are laughing the loudest or sound happy, they might be suffering a lot uh, because usually that's how it is. So reach out to people uh, that laugh a lot because they might uh, also be going through problems and be kind. So yeah, that was a little you know, thing that I had to add. Oh yes, I agree with you. Kindness is so important and um, empathy. Um, it's, it's something that is, um, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that more children are being uh, un taught to understand what it is because, you know, it's so important to, to um, people say like, oh, you're either born with it or you don't have it. I'm like, no, I think if you could just set, show by an example, right? Like if people, some people thought you, when you mentioned the word kindness and then you have empathy, people, some people think empathy is sympathy, you know, it's not. Empathy is understanding how the other person is feeling. And um, so I, I love what you're saying. Um, so, so Bobby, um, when did you get into social media? Oh, social media as it is now you mean because it's been for like 20 no years. no the early days of social media when <laughs> oh, was when oh. was your first what okay. platform were you first on I, i'm kind of curious because you're i i looked you up and you ha you're everywhere um so i know i know <laughs> i tagged you too by the way if you log an enemy account we tagged you on it so oh thank you uh well i mean um I remember in the Caribbean, because I did a course in Albania, MS-DOS, I don't know, you know, like the language. I didn't understand nothing, to be honest, but I started in the Caribbean. You, you have to keep in mind, this is 25 years ago, in 1998, I got full on, but uh, I did not even speak good English, right? So computers uh, taught me English and books. I kept reading books and uh, Literally, I had a Albanian, now English to Albanian dictionary next to me, and I would log on the computer, even like file, I would click, what is file? What does it mean? New tab, new window. I had to translate everything from the computer because I didn't understand, right? So no English, and uh, I remember was CISO, was uh, web shots, was a platform where we used to put photos because I love photos. I'm like those tourists that have a camera hanging and taking 100 photos of the floor because, wow, it looks pretty, the tarmac. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, posting photos. And Yahoo had chat as well, MSN Messenger. Oh, my God. And if we used to go in chat rooms and I used to tell people, can you help me with my English? And uh, if I make mistakes, you know, just correct me. And people were so generous. And uh, yeah, that's how it was back then. All kinds of uh, platforms, whatever I found, I'm like, make an account and MySpace and <laughs> all kinds of things. But yeah, 98, I would say, uh, I was like full on got into when it was dial up and waiting for 30 minutes, ding, you know. <laughs> until you connect cable and wireless in the Caribbean. That's where I lived back then for four years. That's when I left Albania. And uh, so I moved around the world because my hubby worked for the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. So he was a diplomat. So every three, four years, we would move to a different country. So embassy after embassy after embassy. And that's me. I tag along and use more dial up. But uh, yeah, now we moved on. I got fiber, baby. <laughs> Actually, you know, my, my, my fiber went down over the weekend. So, I, I mean, um, you know, my fiber went down. So I was like asking them about dial up and they were, because, you know, my phone, everything's connected to the, uh, the Wi-Fi. And they're like, no, that's just, it's going to cost too much money for us to do that again and to go back that way. I'm like, well, doesn't <laughs> So when you brought that up, I was just thinking, I'd, I'd love to have, uh, you know, in both worlds, if, if I, I didn't have internet, I can still go through, you know, dial up, but it doesn't work like that anymore. But, you know, technology, technology. Um, 
So, so um, here we are today, and we're getting ready to go into Web three. And I touched a little bit about where you were, and like you know how you got into the digital media. But you were you were like a live streamer on Periscope. Did you spend most of your time on Twitter, or did you um, spend time on Facebook? Because I, I I looked you up on Facebook, and you have an incredible um, profile. So tell us about that. What what is it like to, doing Periscope? I mean, what was it like the first time you turn on a live yeah. stream on Periscope? Oh, I'll tell you. I was on Facebook when Facebook was fun. I opened Facebook when actually it was fun and we could share photos because I moved around the world and I wanted my family, always was kind of private, to see the photos. And I have a son, so he's 15 and a half, so they can see photos of my child, you know, how is he growing. Uh, but then it stopped being fun when the ad started and... Uh, everything was being hidden uh so i uh, i do have a page uh for my business which is valbona bigger art and uh, i link all my uh, live streaming in that on uh, the business page and so people can view because i have quite a lot of followers there but the, the periscope was funny uh, how I, I discovered it. It was a friend of mine. I had an exhibition in London. So it was kind of a combined exhibition. I had my artwork hanging. I had uh, combined everything. I did a live a body painting and I had a mini fashion show. All the models were in my bespoke uh, wearable art. So were in my clothes. And it was so much fun. So one of my friends, uh, got the phone out Rebecca and she started like just videoing me I'm like what are you doing she said oh my god this, this new app it just started and people just watch you and give you hearts and what how I'm like oh okay uh, so she did that and over a thousand people were watching I'm like what I, I never seen that because it was like the first app to actually do that and uh, I, I went home uh and I downloaded it. But for a couple of months, I did not stream. I had to see what's going on. I do that all the time with any platform. I do my research. And if I would be fitted for that platform, I wouldn't put my name just on anything. But I would test everything because I like testing and to see where I fit in and how can I be of value. Uh, and I did not know if people would be interested in makeup or body painting or art and what have you. Uh, but I started, I started doing art, even though the, uh, the, I don't know, connection wasn't as good back then and was portrait mode because it was the first kind of platform to do that. But uh, it went on and uh, I had like five people watching. Oh my God, incredible. It's like, Five people are watching me. When I had 100 people watching me, I texted my sisters, oh my God, 100 people were there. Just watch me draw like a little doll. I don't know, I was just drawing, <laughs> doing a drawing and chatting. And uh, But I stayed there for like over seven years until the day it shot. And every night doing broadcasting and sometimes I'll do body painting, travel. And I have this show, I did a... Uh, coffee chat with Bobby, which people love. I know Brent loves coffee chat with Bobby. And because uh, that was the time where I connected, I got to know people, you know. So tell me about you. Because while I do art, I'm looking down and talking about the art. And it was amazing. I, I used to take people in big events because I'm one of the official body painters for Pride London. I paint the celebs at the Trafalgar Square. So I did that broadcast in a few years back from uh, Pride London, it was over 250,000 people. And uh, it was mind blowing to me, right? Because when my husband says, oh, I'm watching football, it's like over 2,000 people there. And then you you realize like how many people are watching you. And you think how incredible is social media that you can reach so many people. And if used for good, you can make, I mean, so many changes out there. You can, if you have a message to give, right, you can reach these people from all over the world. And that fascinates me. And now with Web3 and even the NFTs, you know, that it has given the, the opportunity to, to artists to take their aims 
in their own hands and as they are decentralized and we can be our own bosses because I stopped doing exhibitions in, in galleries a few years back. I don't work. I do my own thing. So I am, uh, yeah, my own boss. <laughs> Sorry, gallery owners. I do love you to visit, to watch other people's art, but no, I'm not interested in to go in. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was amazing. I've made so many friends and I see most of them here that have been with me for over seven and a half. How many years were we? But from day one to day last day when we cried and did the, our last broadcast, uh, Mel and Lampe is here and Dimi. Those are people who have been with me from the very beginning. And funny enough, that Pride London uh, broadcast I was doing, Mel connected me with me through that send me a very lengthy email saying how much she enjoyed and appreciated and we became fast friends so uh, these people right are from all over the world but to me they are like family you can make such deep connections with people and if you're authentic if you are yourself i'm always i wear heart my heart in my sleeve and uh, uh, people connect with you and I am so blessed and lucky to have had that opportunity and to, to Periscope for giving me that opportunity to connect with so many amazing people from all around the world. I've met a lot of them because we used to do meetups. And uh, yeah, from when it closed, yes, we all felt sad. However, like in any business, right, business fails, God knows, I know that very well. I've had many of those failed businesses, but I had successful ones and they are all lessons learned. So uh, without those, we wouldn't have the experiences in life that we have and we learn. And I moved to another app uh, called Hubs and that was good. They switched it only for musicians. So I moved along. So now I'm just uh, doing um, through the stream still broadcasting but, uh, or through twitter media studio and on twitter but mainly i use twitter i love twitter uh i don't know I, with twitter spaces this uh, one, a year and a half that i've been on uh well it's going almost two years in january i'll be two years but uh, it's uh, been incredible because i have already the people uh, that I've met through Periscope that joined me. And then I've met new people uh, that, well, a lot of them are here right now and fascinating. And I love, I love just uh, getting to know people and learning different cultures. And uh, it's just so amazing. And I learn something new every day, no matter how smart uh, you think you are, you are not. Uh, trust me, that is like 100% true. And I get, uh, even the, in the things that I think I've mastered something, I'm good at, I join spaces and I get these crumbs of knowledge. I go in to be like a sponge to soak in information. Even if I know a, something, I would still get crumbs of knowledge. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. So that's why I say do not just join spaces. That's one of the tips I give all the time that of, you know, like I'm an artist. I just have to join art spaces. No, I am all over the place because if I want to know about technology, I have to to join tech rooms tech uh, spaces which i do all the time because my son wants to study computer science and he's doing coding so i want to be well educated in able to support my son and i've gotten so many people help me and sending me open resource like uh, things for him to study and uh, little tests he can take and things like that so uh, if you don't ask for help I say you never will get help. And if you are kind uh, to other people and help people unconditionally without expectations, somebody out there going to help you too is going to do the same. And that's what my mom used to say. Do good for the eyes of God because God is watching and pays you in return in kind. So, uh, yeah. Sorry. I went on ranting again. <laughs> oh no, no, no! You're good. Like, like Emily, uh, Emily Tapper's been in uh, digital media for 
Emily, how long have you been in digital? <laughs> you and I are like, <laughs> you know, like age me here. No, we've been, I've been in digital media, gosh, like, I mean, I feel like almost 15, 18 years since that. I mean, I remember I was launching social media platforms for luxury hotels, like the Hilton brand and the back in like the early days of Twitter and stuff. So we were, we were doing like lunch and learns and everything, teaching people how to do all this. So yeah, I, I feel like things have changed so much, but what I really like about what you're doing as well, Bobby, is mixing like the digital side and the social side with this tangible art side and being able to express through the painting and the pieces you're putting together. And I've looked at some of the body painting work you've done and oh my goodness, it's incredible. Um, I've, I have my only, I've, I've no, I have no talent like that, but I do watch the body painting shows on Netflix and the stuff I saw that you put out was like mind blowing. Um, how did you first decide to paint on a body and how did you get into all of that? And I just, I'm so curious how it all flows together for you. Oh, you know what? That's a funny story. Cause uh, that I, I am a person that I never say I can't, you know, or I won't try something. I want to test and try everything, but uh, because I did makeup already, uh, that, I came, I lived in Malawi. Our last posting was in Malawi and I was working at British High Commission there. Then I opened the school because my son was small, teaching through art and music. And then I was working with an orphanage for a couple of years. So when I came here, I had, this is a story, right? My son started school and I felt like, Oh my God, he's not caring because they say, oh, the kid's going to suffer because he was just five. When they go to school, it's like withdrawal symptoms. He did not care at all. I was getting withdrawal symptoms. I kept going to school, looking outside. Oh my God, is somebody fighting with him? And it was driving me mental. My husband said, it's not healthy for you. You know, do something with yourself. So I had to figure out what to do with myself, right? Because I was for all this time, I was full on mummy, you know, full time mummy. And I loved it. I love it's like the best thing ever. And 24 hours with my son. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to study. So the same time as my son goes to school, I'm going to go. So I studied interior design. And then I did the business and marketing at the same time. And yeah, I finished, but I did not, I did like a four month stint at that is my friend's architectural studio. And I had like this wake up call. I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? I feel like underused and I'm not creative enough, like how I would like. And uh, so I left. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to do the makeup. And the body painting started from a shoot. We were doing a photo shoot and one uh, the director there asked, hey, uh, can you do body painting? I'm like, yeah, of course. You know, of course I did not do body painting. I've done like a bit of face painting on my son, but I didn't do. So I'm like Google searching, what is body painting? <laughs> but in my mind, I'm like, I'm an artist. How hard would it be? I mean, like it's like painting, using the, the body as a canvas. So uh, I did have some paints, but then I had to get some professional ones i did my research and all and we i did this photo shoot and it was to raise awareness for the animals and it was for a magazine and i did this cheetah as it went semi-viral on facebook and everybody thought i was professional <laughs> and i wasn't saying otherwise i i was not convinced in them that that was my first ever work right so I got invited to take part in Paintopia Body Painting Festival, which is the biggest body painting festival in UK. And uh, I was flying to Albania, funny enough, that day I called while I was on the taxi to go to Heathrow. And I said, I'd like to register for this body painting thing. And I registered. I did that little sketch when I was in Albania. And uh, I went with having in my mind that I'm going to do my research on body painting what do artists use in terms of materials and uh, brushes you know the techniques so i went to investigate and learn however when uh, 
and entered the solo competition because I did not have a partner. I did not know anybody in the body painting world when they announced like, and the winner is, and I had my friend that is hairdressers, Anushka Romanenkova with me, that she did this hair like a Paris kind of, you know, like Big Ben made out of hair. Bobby Baker, I'm like, what? You know, I think, and she kept pushing me, it's you, Bobby, go, go up there on stage, you know. It was like amazing. This is 2014. And from then on, it's history. I fell in love. It's just a beautiful uh, kind of art form. And to me, it's just having uh, painting, right? Expressing myself, but having a beating. Uh, canvas like a beating heart on your canvas so it moves and you just uh, develop your technique and what have you and uh, I judged the Paris uh, body painting the French body painting festival I went I was invited to Milan no v v uh, Verona and uh, in Italy winter body painting but at the moment kind of in London I do teach in the London School of Beauty and Makeup uh, as an instructor there, and uh, I I just go for fun, do a bit of demo here and there, and judge many competition beauty and body painting competition, and do master classes now. I teach my techniques that I've developed, but it helped me be in live streaming because I was painting myself all the time, and sometimes up to six hours and doing this character makeup, and that helped me to learn more and develop my techniques. So live streaming not only has been great that for my art, because my uh, fans and people that watched me always pushed me, hey, can you show us how to do that? Even if I did not know how to, I would do my research and I will try it. And I always was upfront, hey, never tested this, so let's do this first time. So even if I messed up, I want people to see all the messing up and the mistakes and because everybody starts somewhere, right? Even with digital art, I just got an iPad, but I posted everything. I'm not ashamed to show my first steps of anything because that pushes people to do to do it themselves to say hey she's an artist and look how rubbish you know <laughs> she's doing oh, i'm gonna have a go at that but by practicing right you get better because uh, there is no such thing as perfection uh, so you practice and it helps with confidence being confident in front of the screen being a good speaker and learning new things and uh, it helped me with my art upping up my game on my body painting and uh, communication skills as well that's what i teach now the confidence and communicating in front of the camera and just helping other well women and men let's not uh, you know, differentiate that, but uh, to to get, but practice, practice, practice. That's all I would say. And practice made me a bit better. And but I'm still learning and practicing. But uh, for seven and a half years, I was every night there too. I see another uh, lovely streamer there, Chris Gales, and uh, yeah. Uh, painting my heart out, as they say, <laughs> he's like singing his heart out, but uh, that's how it was. It started as me saying, yes, I can, without me uh, doing it, because uh, I never did it, and then I won a competition, you know, the best in London, I'm like, yeah. So sometimes, uh, not like lying, but the truth is good, because if you are an artist, you know you can paint, it's just a different... Uh, you know, te uh, technique that you have to develop. So uh, I say every day, every moment in your life is an opportunity. Do not see or put, is our brain that put boundaries and we stop ourselves because we have fear. Fear is what keeps us back. I do not, I mean, yeah, now fear is out the window. I'm like, yes, I can. Uh, and uh, I have a go. I have a go because I have nothing to lose. And if I mess up, I say, hey, sorry, I messed up. But I'm going to have another go and try a different way. So I hope that answered its story. It was a very lengthy <laughs> answer. Uh, no, but I love that. And I think just the 
the inspiration of hearing your story and saying, just go for it. Because I think so many of us, as you just said, we stop ourselves because of whatever preconceived notion we have, or we can't do this, or we have to do this. And um, there's so much imposter syndrome. And I love hearing you just say, you went for it. You know, that I, I, I don't love fake it till you make it. I like face it till you make it. And you just go ahead on and face whatever comes. And I think you're the epitome of that. And that's really impressive. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because I mean, like, I'm not, I'm like you, not with the fake it until you make it. I would never do that because unless I know, because I'm already an artist. So my mindset was, how hard could it be? I'm an artist. I can paint on anything and everything. And now I'm just going to use the body as a canvas. So it's not much of a difference uh, to me. And going for it, I mean, people... All of us, all of us, we have this thing called fear, but fear and excitement is the same thing. I mean, like, I'm always excited. I could be fearful at any moment, right? But I turn that fear into excitement by, by just thinking something that makes me happy. I would think of my son hugging me so tight, and now he's like almost, you know, <laughs> six feet tall. And oh, my my face lights up and I'm happy. So I can constantly, anytime I feel fearful, I think of something magical, which is my son. And boom, I'm all of a sudden, I'm excited now. And people feel that excitement. So if you do that, if you hold yourself back, trust me, you are doing a disservice. Whoever is listening this now on, on replay you are always going to be judged no matter what, no matter how pure and perfect you are. But why would you care? Do these people that judge you have an immediate effect in your life? Are they feeding you, putting food in your, in your table, feeding your family? No, they're not. So why would you stop yourself? Because you're a bit fat, a bit thin, a bit, I mean, yes, I am, but who cares? You know, I'm not getting food from somebody to put in my mouth. Yeah, I get, <laughs> you know, the 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 health and, and everything I do is for me. And I judge me. I put myself up or down. You never put yourself down because if you do, other people going to think little of you. Sorry, I need some water because I'm choking. No worries. And no worries. I, I, I love, don't you love that, Tanya? Like, I, I feel like that's what we all that's need what to be about. Together. Yes, like saying it all the time, like empower yourself and who cares what the other people say or think. Do it for yourself. Do it because it's it's your passion. It's what drive, what's driving you. And don't worry about, you know, don't read the comments. That's <laughs> Don't read the comments. Just do your life because you're the one who has to get up every day and live it. So we have about 13 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, give the mic out to all the listeners. So anyone in the space would like to join us, you're welcome to. Um, I'm going to, when Bobby comes back, we'll do a Q&A real quick. And here we go. I'm going to go ahead and. So um, I'm going to go ahead and give the mic to Babani. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Hi. 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 How are you today? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, I am feeling good today. And I'm glad to listen this space. Did you have a question for Bobby? Yes, her story much more motivated me, motivating me. And uh, I'm glad I have so many uh, interest on that body thinking work. And uh, yes, I like it. And uh, please give others to speak. I will listen. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And so, okay, thank you for coming up here. I, I'm gonna put you down as a listener, but um, the, the next mic is goes to. I am glad. I'm, gl I'm glad to be here. 
थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू Hello. Uh, yes, thank you for having me here. Um, uh, well, probably a, a question for Bobby. Have you had any experience of probably using your body painting into the VR world in a way with models, everything? Ah, uh, not in the VR world yet. Hi, and uh, thank you for that question. But. Uh, I've been thinking that would look so amazing because um, I, I want to implement. I've been speaking to, with some people because even though I've been since March within the NFT community and helping artists and sell their art, I haven't minted yet, and I am in OVR uh, over the land reality and. Uh, Yeah, I am not that smart to be able to do that. So if anybody out there wants to collab, I am more than happy to do the body painting, you know, and do something like that. Because um, yeah, it could. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm choking so bad. It could look like epic, literally. I was looking for some of the body painting to pin up. on uh, here so you guys can have a look what i do but uh no to answer your questions i haven't i think i think it was well i'm sure you're highly intelligent i think it's more the experience so if you're used to the programs and everything else like that you probably can do some very very good art Yeah, I'm going to have a go at learning um, AR and all the tech that is evolving and uh, is going so quick right now that is with a speed of light. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so I'm going to go ahead and give the mic to Chris. Hi, Chris. Thank you for requesting the mic. Hello there. How are you doing? Doing great. Oh, good morning to me. Well, it's good morning for me. Good morning, Bobby. Good morning, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah, um, Bobby has helped me a lot over the past few years with me becoming a a live streamer. Also, um, she's encouraged me a lot. It's good to see someone as professional as she is, but still, you know, it's still approachable. Um, a lot of the serious, serious professional people I, I found in the past, especially in my industry, aren't as approach approachable. And I thank Bobby for that. Uh, in regards to the self doubt deal, um, I think a lot of a lot of people like myself and a lot of creatives. We're unique in the groups that we in our family groups, um, and pretty much every group that we walk into, we're we're unique, and uh, a lot of people can't quite see what we see, and that adds to our doubt. Also, um, I have learned, and I'm trying to teach my children that too, because they're both very creative. I try to teach them that they're thinking in a producer mindset as opposed to a A uh, consumer mindset, so they're going to always be a little bit awkward, and sometimes feel awkward, and sometimes made to feel awkward. But they have to stay on course with their creativity as much as possible and as strong as possible. Um, and that is something that I see Bobby doing <laughs> very well. And I actually refer her, refer my my daughter, who is a wonderful artist, um, um, three dimensional artist. Uh, I, I refer to, I refer her to Bobby's work quite frequently, and I just wanted to say a big thank you to Bobby. I guess that's what all that was for. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. And you, you're amazing live streamer. I mean, what content creator, musician. Guys, if you haven't heard Chris, you should. I mean, his voice, and he always thinks for me, just the two of us. And I know Chris. As soon as I enter his broadcast, and I met him from uh, Periscope, and one of my 
uh, friends that was in my community said, hey, a new musician have joined. You should hear him because he's singing your kind of music because I always play like jazz and blues and the background and the old common music. And I go and I hear him out. I'm like, what? And every time I saw him, I followed him straight away. And yo, go follow Chris Gales. He's amazing. And every time I saw him going live, I would see him. But he's the most hardworking person I've seen like in, in the live streaming realm, besides myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, literally, he worked so hard. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. And I'm so happy you do refer your daughter because she'll have like a good uh, inspiration, find inspiration and not to take uh, no for an answer or take a blues and booing because God knows in live streaming, we get so many keyboard warriors and people expressing their feelings freely and coming calling names and all that so you have to develop this thick skin but i say from one ear to the other and uh, uh that's all i say but uh i can see a uh, khan has his hand up uh sorry i'm gonna stop there so give him the opportunity to speak hi khan. your the mic is yours Probably is just waving at you. <laughs> that must okay. be the internet issue. Yeah. So it's uh, we got five minutes left. Uh, I, I want to go ahead and uh, do some final thoughts. And if anyone out there would like to share some final thoughts about what we chat about today, and again, you know what? I keep coming back. I feel like everything you're saying to resonate with all of us in this space. You know. Um, face it until you make it. I love that, Emily. That should be a t-shirt. Oh, it was me. That should be a t-shirt, right? I love that, though. I, fake it is not fair to anybody, as Bobby said. You know, if you're faking it, you're not really being very helpful. But if you're facing it, you're living up to your fears. And that we all have fears, but courage is still doing things in the face of the fear. That's a, not the right quote, but it's something like that. So yeah, we've had some good t-shirt slogans today. <laughs> but overall, I feel like this has been a really, really inspiring um, Empowerment Monday, or Empower Yourself Monday. And I feel like if you listen to Bobby speak today and you aren't going to follow her after this and follow what she's going to do next, that it's, I, I can't even imagine that. I feel like everyone here, if they haven't heard of you before, is going to spread the word about you today because I myself, and I'm sure everyone was truly, um, really inspired and it was exciting to listen to you speak today like you make me want to go forth and do things but uh, you do a lot of a book of an agency <laughs> <laughs> like, what else can you do emily i don't know but now i'm gonna go yeah, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know, she I, does though she, she makes i listened to her talk i was like god what else do i need to do today because <laughs> i'm doing enough <laughs> Yeah, right. but you are already multifaceted. Most women are. I mean, like, we do so much in our lives, and we always have to develop new skills. And we are superhumans. Uh, we are superwoman, I say, but we are all women out there. I and mean, if you put all the skill sets that you learn from a child up to adulthood, and you pile them up, then no matter what, how little you think or how much your confidence have been knocked and you, it's, all your dreams been crushed, you sit down and put all of those, you know, sewing, knitting, and, uh, crocheting and cooking and, you know, rearing children and reading and writing. Oh, you put everything up there and then you, the list will go on and on. And then you pop on top of that, it goes social media. And you have to do marketing well because you're getting out there and, and public speaking because you're, you're speaking on spaces. So make sure you write them down uh, for anybody out there that says I'm not good enough or I'm scared to go and do it. Turn that fear into excitement and just do it. Just do it. If you don't do it, you're doing a disservice to yourself and the, 
and humanity that is waiting to listen to your story, to hear you speak, and be a good, bad, your experiences need to be heard, write them down, share them, share them, share them. That's all I have to say. Any fear, turn it into excitement and do it. I see a, a hand up, sorry. <laughs> oh no, but thank you. Um, but it is highly inspirational. Thank you, Bobby. And well, removing the fear, I would love to offer any of my ideas to anyone that would like to have it. Um, I have so much type of ideas that I just need, let's say, a community or a team to assist. But I do thank you. And I'm not I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to shill myself neither. No, we appreciate you for being here and thank you for um, your insight. And yes, definitely. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm Tanya. I'm, uh, I'm Tanya shows. I'm, I'm I will follow you and then we can chat offline because we're always looking for new collaboration. And, and if I can't help you or collaborate, I'm sure we can connect you with tons of people. And Bobby, too. My gosh, Bobby. I thought I know a lot of people. Bobby, like, <laughs> she knows a lot. Everywhere I go, I'm like, Bobby's in this space. <laughs> She's our, so it's just, um, I think, in, like Bobby said, it's so true as women and men today, we're always they, they say it's a hustle. That's a good word, I, I feel. You know, we always have to diversify and do other things and learn other things. And, you know, because if we stop, you know, we don't learn, right? And, and we don't learn, we don't get empowered. So, um, Bobby, so before I let you go, can you tell our listeners um, how to get a hold of you? Again, this is uh, a recorded space, but it is being streamed to our Facebook group, Facebook page, Twitch, YouTube, and on Twitter Live, too. Oh, wow. I am sorry to anybody that is listening to the other platforms for my froggy voice right uh, during the end of this uh, space. I was choking so bad. I thought that I nearly died. My eyes were poking. My son was rushing in to give me some water because I had coffee, but no water here. So I'm like uh, DMing Tonya saying, hey, I'm choking. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me here. I can see my sister came to support. She probably is at work. Donita, hi, sis. But uh, thank you ever so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. And, of course, Tanya, for inviting me. I love you. And I always enjoy your spaces. You are a trailblazer. You are so helpful. Genuinely a kind human being. Because I've seen you, how, the way you <clears throat> help people starting with brand right you're so compassionate person and pure pure soul so that's why i connected with you you help and that's how you help people unconditionally without knowing people you offer your help you help them without ex expectation because uh, that's the best and you do that really well and um, i love you for that and uh, thanks so much for having me here and everybody that showed up uh, to listen to me, probably you've heard a lot of already if you've been on Twitter Spaces, but uh, wherever uh, you are listening, what platform, uh, thank you so much. And uh, this is Bobby Baker. I'm an artist in London. And if you come on Twitter, click on my profile. The pin tweet is the artist on Twitter community. Come be part of it. Be inspired. Share any art you do, uh, being that. Uh, fine artist, digital, NFT artist, a writer, a poet, whatever you are, uh, join, be part of it and uh, share your wisdom and your talents with us. So uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, and then, oh, incredible thank you, Bobby. This is, yeah, and Bobby, thank you. thank you. Right, Terry and, and Emily, another incredible episode. And I want to also make sure we put a shout out to our, our South Florida very own Carla Campus, who um, I'm hope I just uh, I'm hoping she's going to be our uh, communicator of the week next week. Uh, and again, everyone, we want to say thank you so much and stay tuned. We'll be back. Uh, next Monday at 10 a.m. And we're also in uh, a membership drive right now. So um, we're going to be uh, sending out a five reason why you should join Women in Communications. And again, everyone have a great day. And Emily, uh, final thoughts? Final thoughts. This is incredible. And we're really excited. We've got some amazing guests coming up. 
have an absolutely incredible guest coming up on future episodes. So join us again next Monday. And thanks for everyone today. And thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Terry, any final thoughts? Oh, Bobby. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, Bobby, this was a wonderful, wonderful show. We can't wait to have you back and see what you're doing down the line. Okay? Very, very inspirational. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you for that guided meditation. It set up the tone. And uh, yeah, thank you, ladies, uh, for having welcome. me. Yes. I look forward to coming back and listening to your spaces, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And again, everyone have a great day. And we will be back next Monday at 10 a.m. Student Standard Time for our episode 25. Bye, everybody. Have an incredible Monday. Be empowered. Thank you all. Bye.